Take your Bible, if you would, turn to 1 Corinthians 9. That's what I have up on the screen. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Melissa, for helping us out with our music. I always need help. Sometimes I don't play the right notes. Sometimes I don't sing the right verses. So I'm glad I've got help. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I mentioned during the prayer, the offering. This is the single most important issue and thing that you deal with in your life. And I want you to listen. First person I'm going to preach this to is me. If I don't preach to myself and if God doesn't preach to me, then I'm no good to anybody. Jesus said, if the salt has lost its savor, it is good for nothing. And I know the, the opinion of a lot of people is that churches and preachers are good for nothing. And I don't want to be that way. I want God to deal with me just as much as God deals with you or anybody else. Secondly, I want to preach this to my own family. If I don't preach to my family and have my family listen to God's Word, I've known preachers that went off on everybody else and ignored their own family. I don't want to do that either. I know that my family are just as capable of sin as I am. And so I'm going to preach this to my family. And then I want to preach this to your ch this church. I love this church. I love this church. Been to other churches. Preached at other churches. Sat in other churches. Sermons. Enjoyed it. But I'd rather be here. I've been here preaching since 1996 and I remember one day I got literally in a closet and I prayed God please don't ever take me away from that church and so far God has blessed that prayer better than I prayed it so I'm going to preach to this church here and then to all you folks online, I, I don't, there's no way I can watch over everybody's needs online. Somebody sent me an email asking me about a certain issue. It's a private issue that they asked me about. And I gave them scripture of what they were asking about. And it was an issue dealing with sin. Is if I can help somebody that way, that's what I want to do. I can't help everybody except just to preach the word. We have pastors who listen to us, some here in this country, but pastors who are listening to us in Kenya. They need this kind of teaching, this kind of preaching. They need it for their own lives, and then they need to pass that on to their churches. But as I said, there is no more important issue in your life than your personal war against your sin. You know, we're worried about who's going to be president. We're worried about if there's going to be some kind of civil breakdown in our nation. We're worried about a lot of things. But I'm telling you, the single most important issue for you to have in your mind and heart every single day is your fight against sin. Without a doubt. Let's get into the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. Are you there? Say amen. Paul said, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So, now think about this. This is what he's saying. Whether it's a foot race, 
which the Kenyans always win that one. There's always some long-legged guy from Kenya or Ethiopia that wins them long races. Them guys are fast. Or whether it's a car race, NASCAR race. They only give out one trophy. Even if it's a football contest, there's only one winner. Unless, of course, it's Little League, then they make like everybody wins. Everybody gets a trophy for playing foot little kids football. I just don't agree with that. I think you ought to win it. But, in the race to heaven, it doesn't matter who goes first. If you get there, everybody gets a prize. So he said, so run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now let me explain that. I commented to a guy at Costco, because I mean his arms, he had his arm, he had one of them shirts on where he didn't have no sleeves. And buddy, his arms were ripped, shredded. You know what that term means? Means he had no body fat whatsoever anywhere. And his skin, you could see his muscles and his veins just sticking out of his skin. And I said, that is some nice looking arms there, bud. I wanted him to think I was friendly. I didn't want him beating on me. What did it take for him to get that? See, I mean, and he, he, got, he did that to himself. And he wore the shirt that he wore. Why? Everybody see his arms. Now, was he born that way? Did he just wake up one day and all of a sudden, poof, he got those arms? What, what did he do? Every day. Every day. I watched a documentary about Lou Ferrigno, the Incredible Hulk. And here's a guy, I mean, he can't hear. He's mostly deaf. You can tell that by the way he talks. And all the kids made fun of him because of the way he talked. So he decided that he would just start lifting weights as a way to overcome him feeling bad about himself. Not only does he win these bodybuilding contests, but he gets picked for the part for the Incredible Hulk. And he said the hardest part about doing that show was... They had him so busy putting the paint on and doing this and throwing stuff on the, for camera and everything like that. He didn't have enough time to, to lift weights. He said, I gotta maintain this. I gotta keep this. So they'll kick me off the show and they get somebody else. So that's what that means. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. That means they discipline themselves to do it so that they get the accomplishment that they're looking for. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep, look at your Bible, I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And buddy, I tell you what, I read that and God just smites my heart. People get exposed for things they do. And if all of us were to jump up and have to tell all of our deepest, darkest sins. We'd probably just want to leave. Because everybody's guilty. And I myself, guilty. Guilty of sin. And that could make me a castaway from the pulpit. That's what he said. Lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Look at what he said. It's 
easy to get into sin, isn't it? Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what it is. It's easy to fall into it. Some. Can, can I name some? Can I name some sins? The Bible does. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, filthiness. It's easy in today's world to fall into adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. With the internet, it's very easy. Alcohol, drinking, there's liquor stores everywhere. And during all the COVID pandemic, they just happened to make sure that all the liquor stores stayed open as a necessary thing so people could keep getting drunk. And it's easy, easy to fall into that. Just about every store in this town and in this county sells bread, milk, and liquor. Just about every one of them. Drugs. It's easy to get drugs. There's somebody, you could probably make three phone calls. If you've never, if you have never bought drugs before in your life, you could probably make three phone calls and find somebody that'll sell it to you. It's easy. All kinds of lasciviousness, covetousness. Looking at somebody else's wife, looking at somebody else's husband. Or how about this? Looking at somebody's daughter or somebody's son. That's not out of the question. He said these sins do easily beset us. Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let's pray. Father, I love you and I love these people. And Father, you know I'm not going to preach around myself. I'm going to preach to myself. And then I'm going to preach to my family. And Lord, I love my family. I love them. But I know, Father, that they're just like me. And God, you've brought me out of some pretty deep pits before. And Father, I love this church. And I know some of these people because they've told me some things. They, they felt like they could and that I wouldn't reject them. How could I? Because they're sinners just like me. And Father, I know everybody, everybody deals with something. And I pray, God, that you would help them today. You laid this on my heart. This is what you told me you want me to preach. But I don't know how to preach it. So I'm going to ask you to help say what needs to be said. Father, I'd like to see everybody, everybody in this room, everybody online right now, I'd like to see them all in heaven. But I know that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And without your grace and your help in our lives, we will not make it. And that's all there is to it. Father, I've seen many people fall. And I don't want to see these people do that. So God, bless your word. Help me to preach. We pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said. Turn to Isaiah chapter 45.
There's several kinds of strife in the Bible. This is the word, strife or striving. That's, that's what I looked up and this is what gave me the verses. One thing that maybe some of you did before you got saved. Now, I, listen, turn in your Bible and I want, I want you to hear me. I want you to listen. Okay? Devil's just getting everybody distracted. This is the single most important. If I died tomorrow, I want to preach this sermon right. Some of you, in fact, in fact probably all of you, at one time, you fought with God, didn't you? Look at this, Isaiah 45, verse 5. I am the Lord, there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. See, God took care of you even when you didn't know about God or you hated God. Did he not feed you? Did he not clothe you? Did he not protect you? Did he not watch over you? Did he not give you blessings? Christ died while we were sinners, not saints. He said that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness, and let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation. He's talking about like rain coming down, and things growing up from the ground, like we see now. And let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. And look at verse 9. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. See, there's woes in the Bible. Anytime God says woe, that means you are in serious danger. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that is fashioned that what makest thou or thy work? He hath no hands. Have you ever, have you ever asked God, God, why did you make me this way? I told our addictions group next time we meet, I'm thinking like every two weeks. Would that be all right? Every two weeks. But I told him I may talk about the genetics of sin, the genetics of addiction. You know, I've told you that, you know, several years ago, they started giving me Percocets. And I ended up having to take eight to ten of them at a time. And so one of the doctors I see, he went and did a DNA test on me because he said there's a gene that some people have that makes them extremely tolerant to opiates. And he said, they're not like other people. Other people can take one and just be out. And some, it takes a dozen or so. And he said, you might have that genetic trait where that's just how you are. There are some people who can drink a drink and put it down, walk away and say, yeah, that was fine, but I, that just doesn't tickle me. And Roy's out there shaking his head. There's some people out there that even the smell of it makes them just want to go out and get drunk. And there's people in this church like that. In our genetics, I believe sin abides in us. And God makes us a certain way. And I have asked God, God, why did you make me this way? I hate it. God, I hate it. Why did you make me this way? And God would say, Mike, so you'll be humble before me and you'll serve me. Okay. I'll take that. And everybody here, everybody listening to me. There's something deep inside of you. One of the doctors I go see, they say, I told them that every now and then I deal with anxiety, depression. And she asked me, I said, are you holding something in? You know, and I thought about that. Everybody is. Everybody is holding something in here that you don't let out. And it's in our nature. And I don't like what that does in me. I don't like it. I hate it. And I want it gone. 
I know for a fact that it won't be until I'm dead. Which means I am going to have to fight that every single day. So don't fight God. That's the worst thing. Strife. Listen to this. We strive against accusations by people like the guy that called me a racist. Well, I want to tear his head off. I wanted to give him a whipping. Right in front of everybody at Sam's. But he accused me of being a racist. Persecutions or temptations. Things that people say. Psalm 31. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Watch this. God said this for your benefit. Thou shalt hide them in the, in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Like, when somebody that you used to run with says, hey, I got a good deal on some pot. You want some? That, and you got you to go, yeah, I do, but no, I don't. Or you go to a store and you're just going to buy butter and milk and bread and you walk past the wine aisle and it's on sale. And the store says, you can buy three of these bottles for $2. And you've got, you've got to strive against that. Or, somebody said something to you that made you angry. Somebody called you something or just made you mad. And you know what our first reaction is? Listen to this. Our first reaction to that is to go out and do our sin, whatever it is. Well, I'm just going to get drunk or I'm just going to get high. Or I'm going to look at naked women on the internet or I'm going to go do this or I'm going to go do that. That's our instinct. That's our flesh. Caused by what people said. You got, you got to strive against that. You got to tell yourself, no. I'm not doing this. And pray. And see, here's what God said. God said, I'll hide you. I'll hide you and keep you from that. But you got to ask. You gotta ask. You gotta want it. Now, now let me change what I just said. Because God has helped me even when I didn't ask. That's how good He is. So, but you gotta want it. You gotta want God to cover you and protect you. God, don't let me see that. Don't let me get tempted by that. Psalm 18, strive against the ungodly of the world. Psalm 18, verse 40, thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies. See, that's what I wanted to do at, cost, at Sam's. That guy called me a racist. I wanted his neck. Thou hast given me the necks of my enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Watch this. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people. And thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. Now I'm not going to deal with that part. I'm going to deal with the, the people. So before, I, before God let me come and be a preacher, God made me work in the world. And God knows. God knows. That as a young person, Teenager, I never, ever, ever, ever wanted to work in construction. And what did God do? Make me work in construction. And 
it. I hated it. But I was young and I didn't want to do it. Didn't want to go to work. But then when my wife got pregnant and she couldn't work, that's when I started wanting to make a, have a raise. Well, my boss was Ron Dagonia. Some of y'all know him. He was not going to give me a raise unless I earned it. And so I figured out things, ways of doing things. See, I worked with Brother Sterling and I worked with his son Steve. And they were a lot better at this stuff than I was. But I figured out things that I could do that they could not do. I can reach an eight foot ceiling with my hand and I can put a paintbrush in my hand and paint the ceiling just like that. And Sterling and Steve especially, Steve's about as tall as his mother, and they had to get on stilts to do that. And all I, all I just, just stand and do it like this. And I got so fast at it, I started getting raises. I started making more money. I could do things that these other guys couldn't do. You see what I'm saying? And that gave me a, just a little bit of pride that when I painted a house, Brother George, and I looked back at it, I saw the house before I painted it, and then I saw it after I painted it, and I said, that's a good job. And I got proud, in, uh, that's, and that's not a bad proud, that's a good proud. It's a satisfaction. God gives us satisfaction when we work with our hands that we did something good. Now, I mean, if y'all believe that, say amen. Don't vote for communists then! But that's... But I had to work around people who smoke, drank, cursed, told dirty jokes, listened to KC95 all day. I had to work with guys that had dirty magazines in their truck. I had to work with guys that talked about their old lady. And then they talked about some woman who was going to buy the house that they were working on. In ways that I cannot say here. God, had, God made me work in that. And he had to teach me how to strive against that. Mike, don't be like them. It had an effect on me. But God was teaching me. And you young, you young guys, you young ladies. Listen to your preacher. You were protected by mom and daddy, but now you're in a world full of wicked people. Don't be like them. This is the single most important thing I could ever preach. Don't be like them. Psalm 35, 4, plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of the shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Do you know what I should have said to that guy that called me a racist? Edward, do you know what I should have said to him? Not a word. Or, hey, I love you anyway. But I didn't. I wanted to wring his neck. So that guy will probably hate me the rest of his life. And I just could have said, hey, that doesn't bother me. I could have answered softly. So God teaches us a lesson, does he not? Let me move on. Hebrews 12, I want you to turn there. Hebrews 12, this is, this is where the message is, the core of the message and I'm, I'm not going to keep you till 1.30, 1 o'clock. I'm not going to do that. But I, I, want you to, I want you to pay attention now. Please, 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 please pay attention to the word. Hebrews 12, verse 2. I, again, this is for me. This is for all my family. This is for my church. Hebrews 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, let me ask you a question. When Jesus came, did he know that he was going to die on the cross? Sure he did. And the night before it happened, what did he ask? Another way. Yes, young man, you wanted to say something. I didn't hear him, Edward. What did he say? Sure he did. You're a wise young man. A wise guy. He said Jesus knew all the stuff that was going to happen. Is that what he said? Amen. I'm going to let you come and preach for me one day. He knew what was coming and he knew what he had to fight against, but he did it anyway. He's like some of the soldiers in American history that knew when the tailgate of that boat lowered down and the guys standing on the front of that, when they stepped into the water, they knew there was a 98% chance they were going to get mowed down before they ever hit the beach. And you know what they were doing? They were making themselves targets so the other guys could make it through safely. That's honor. And that's what it's going to take. Now look at what he said in verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood. And here it is, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So this is how God's going to help you with your sin. Those of you that need to stay away from alcohol and you take a drink, God's going to whip you. But he's going to do it out of love. Because he doesn't want you to do that ever again. Those of you who take drugs or have taken drugs, you may fall back into it. God is going to beat the devil out of you. But he's going to do so because he loves you. Take it, take the beating. Faint not. Strive against sin. Yes, you are going to fall back into it. Get back up. Get back up. Because God will help you. God will stand you back up. He'll beat you back up. And then he'll say, you learned a lesson, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, that's good because it's going to get worse from here on out. But I'm going to make you into a mighty soldier for God. Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians 9. Turn your Bibles there. Let me hear them. You know what I know some of you need? Revival. Revival. First Corinthians 9, 22. To the weak. Here's what Paul said. To the weak. Became I as weak. I've said this many times. Do you think that God gave you the strong pastor who never, who never sins? I'm the model for you to be like me. Do you think God gave you that here? You're crazy. God did not give you a strong pastor. He gave you a weak one. Somebody that's just like you. Just like you. Some of you know the battles that I have fought. The battles that I've fought in tears. So that I could continue to stand behind this pulpit. And tell you about the love of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins 
and how we all can go to heaven even though we're all wicked people. So Paul said to the weak, I'm become as weak that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. That's exactly who I am. I told you that I was going to start an addictions Bible study because I've been there. I've been there. And I want to help. I want to help somebody. So God made me just like all of you. In verse 23, And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be a partaker thereof with you. Remember what Paul said? God called me, uh, how did he say it? As a sinner as, uh, of whom I am chief or something like that. How did he say that? I forgot it. Christ died for sinners of whom I am chief. So verse 24, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain, I already read this verse earlier, uh, a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Ask yourself the question, please, Listen to your preacher. Ask yourself the question, do you still want to be here in this church until the day you die? Do you want your funeral to be right here in this place? Do you want me to say about you, I know he's saved. Like, like I said about my brother-in-law. He was a wicked man. He was so full of sin. And I saw God change him and turn him into a saint. And I tell God all the time, God, I'm so proud of you for doing that for my brother-in-law. God, I'm, I'm so thankful. You took, I loved him. I, liked him. I loved him like a brother. We worked together. We were a good team. We made that man a lot of money. We didn't get much of it. But he was the boss. And he got so far into sin, he hated me. Because he knew I, what I represented. And God pulled him out of the mess, the shootings the fights, the adulteries, the drugs, the alcohol, God, the cursing. He'd sit next to his mom, I'd preach, and he'd say, Amen, and I'm going, he doesn't say four-letter words like that. But he said, Amen. And if God can save him, and if God can save me, God can save anybody. And five days, Days before he died, he came into my office. Mike, I want to make sure I'm going to heaven. That was more important to him than anything. And it should be to you. And there are people, and I have had people in my mind right now in this church act like you don't care. And I don't want that for you. I was looking for something to blow my nose on and all I have is my Trump mask. <laughs> I love you. I don't want you to be a castaway. I don't want... Listen to, you'll, listen to your preacher. We taught this morning in Sunday school about church authority over sin. And if you're, if you're involved in sin, and I come to you, I'm coming to you to restore you, but if you reject that, eventually I will have to toss you out. Don't you ever make me do that. 
I've done it. I've done it. Don't ever make me do that to you. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Turn your Bibles. Flip, 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 flip. Mark, mark this down. Mark these verses. Make some notes here. Come on. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. When, when these guys in the military run, when I say to them, thank you for serving. Some of them ask me, oh, you serve too? No. I couldn't. I thought about it. I thought about joining the Navy. I'd have never made it. So these guys that went through hardship as a soldier, you've got my love and respect. Even the ones that vote Democrat, I love them. I've got an uncle, Iwo Jima, Pacific Islands, Marine, World War II. Had all of his buddies shot and blown up. He's still alive. I disagree with him on just about everything concerning politics and religion and everything, but I love what he did and I honor him. He endured hardness. And you know what? You're going to have to. It's not easy. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life. Are you listening to your Bible? That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet as he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. That means you can't get there breaking the rules. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Consider what he's saying here. If you work and labor in your garden, and you expect things out of it, you're the one who gets the first pick out of it. You deserve it. You worked it. I want you to strive against sin. Romans 15. Turn there very quickly. I'm going to try to get through this. Not keep you, but I want you to pay attention now. Yea, so I have strived to preach the gospel. Not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see. They that have not heard shall understand. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. You know, I talked about my brother-in-law. And all the things that I had to deal with in my life. And all the ways the devil tried to stop me from serving God. And it was hard. And it still is. But when my brother-in-law got ready to get right with God. He didn't go to Joel Osteen. He didn't go to Billy Graham. He came to me. Because God helped me to be somebody that he looked to when he got ready to know God. God did that. And then verse 30. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God and may be with you be refreshed. And I'm, here's what I'm telling you. I do. I'm, I'm thinking of some people. Preaching this message. And I worry. Man, I worry. You know what would bring me joy? What would bring me joy, what has always brought me joy, is to know that everything in your life is okay between you and God. That's what brings me joy. That's where I get my joy from. That's what I labor for. That's what I work for. My wife will tell you, I spend most of my time 
studying, thinking, working on messages, doing things to tell people, to preach to people. And I do it because I want to see God working in your life. And if I don't see it, it worries me, it bothers me. I'm striving with you, not against you. We're here as a church to strive together. On these Thursday nights, those with various addictions, and I don't make anybody tell anything that they've done. They can if they want, but I don't make anybody do that. That ain't what that's for. But we come together to help one another. We all need the help. And it's probably some of you, you may not be addicted to alcohol and drugs. You might be addicted to online shopping, online chatting with people you shouldn't be chatting with. You might be addicted to gambling. See, that's easy now too, isn't it? The internet's made all this stuff easy. Dirty pictures on the internet. There's all kinds of addictions. And maybe you're just not telling anybody. And you don't have to. But I want you to know that if you're in this church and those are your issues, then I want you to know that we're here to help everybody that God sends here. This man sitting here on the back row, he's heard me preach, he just listened. At, yeah, I'm talking, to you, I'm talking about you. Yeah. Brandon, right? He said he just heard, just listened to a few sermons of mine on the internet, decided that he would come see and see how it is. Okay? You're sitting in a room, I'm telling you, you're sitting in a room with the worst people in Jefferson County. Wicked, hell-deserving, terrible people that want to go to heaven when they die. And we're here to help. If anybody needs help. You young people. Cameron, I love you. You lived in mom and daddy's house. And now that you're out of it, you're out in the world. Is it hard? See, I'm not going to ask him anything else. But he's found out there's some things out there ain't easy to, to go through. And you can tell some of these other young people, it's, it ain't fun and games. It's a, it's a war. It is a war. But it's worth fighting. Because the prize is everlasting. You know what I'm fixing to ask you to do, right? If you want to strive, you want to fight, you want to do it together, there you, here they come. I didn't even mask you. I was going to say stand up and do cartwheels. You're here in a church that's here to help you. Yeah. My wife and I, 33 years, we've had to strive so that we stayed together. It's a fight. It's a battle. Our widows, they strive against the loneliness that they now have to deal with. And that's hard. I love you people. 
I can't get on that knee yet. Father, we come before you today. And I needed this message. You've helped me in so many ways. I can't believe the things you've done for me. I just, it's hard for me to fathom why you love me so much to do what you've done for me. And Father, my past is ever before me. It never goes away. And I think you want it that way. So that I learn patience. And I learn to wait on the Lord. And I learn to trust you. And I learn to fight against my own sins. My own flesh. So that I could help others. So that people would come to me. Mike, I need help. Mike, I'm struggling with this. Mike, is, is this wrong, what I'm doing? Is this wrong? I need, I need help. And I don't turn people away. I'm here to help. Because you helped me. And Father, help these people. This is the most important thing ever. To strive against sin. Help us, Father, as a church to do it together. To help one another. Not judge one another. But to help one another. And Father, I'm praying for some people right now. And you know who they are. God, would you send revival to our church? Revive us, Father. Give us new life. Give us forgiveness. Give us the rod of correction if we need it. But teach us, Father, how to be a good soldier. How to work at it. And not give up. Teach us that, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for preaching to me today. Thank you for preaching to my people. And all the people across the world. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want you to go to somebody this morning. Before you leave, just whoever God lays on your heart, give them a hug and say, If you need anything, I'm here to help you. I'm here to pray for you. I want you to know I love you. Can you do that? Let's stand to our feet.